Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this series. Today we're going to continue with our lighthouse. This is the final day of this week's uh, project. Now, tomorrow and Sunday, I'm going to be talking about some little tips and tricks about the software. As you know, we're going to keep it simple uh, just for the weekend. And then on Monday, since we don't have anything planned for next week, we're actually going to go back and um, continue with the lighthouse. Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys are looking forward to more content. We have these little pillars right here, which is what we did uh, yesterday. Turned out nice, right? Now, some of you actually shared a couple of techniques and secrets with me, and that's one of the videos I'm gonna be making tomorrow. There's a, a thing here called, um, where is it? I can't find right now, but there's a way, this one, replace objects. So I'm gonna be talking tomorrow about the replace objects feature because it's something I didn't know about. So I did a little bit of research and it seems like a really, really handy tool. So we're gonna be uh, taking a look at that one tomorrow, okay? Now, uh, for today, I promised you guys that I was going to blow your mind and show you a very nice way in which we can um, attack this area right here, right? Like this uh, sort of like dock. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, we need to get some research. And um, if we take a look at docks, you're going to see that uh, when they are like this big, they usually have this like sort of like wooden reinforcements on the front. And then everything else is lined up with just like uh, slates, right? Or just like flat pieces of wood. And uh, since we're going to be doing this for games, we need to think of a way to optimize this in the best possible way. So what I'm going to show you right now is a technique that we can use to create complex geometry. So that it's not just a simple, just like a flat plane, but also um, we're going to be using titleable textures. So for those of you that don't know what titleable textures are, uh, titleable textures are textures that, as the name implies, tile together. And it doesn't matter how many times you repeat them, you're always going to have the same sort of pattern. Now, titleable textures are super, super useful because they will allow us to create some very nice uh, or, or cover large areas of our objects without the need of having like super gigantic texture maps, which, uh, as you guys know, texture maps nowadays are one of the main bottlenecks in performance. So I have access to Substance a Source, or well, it used to be called Substance Source. It's now called uh, Adobe um, Assets or something, Substance 3 Assets. So um, if you have uh, this thing right here, uh, yeah, there we go. You can just look for it, like wood, and you're gonna be able to find all of this uh, wood elements or wood materials that we can use. However, I don't want you guys to uh, go in here because I know most of you don't have, or some of you might not have this uh, access. So don't worry, I got your back. There's 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 also a very nice site called Polyhaven. And Polyhaven is a great site for HDRs, we've used it before, for models as well, and for textures. So if I go here into textures, you're going to see that we have, for instance, this one. And look at this, it's beautiful, it's exactly what we need. The only thing I don't like about this texture is that it is going to limit us to having this sort of like lines, right? Like, like it will be super useful if we want to create planks, but if we want to model our own wood, then it might not be the best idea. However, we have this one right here, which is a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. And as you can see, uh, we don't have as much of an issue because the lines of the wood is not are not as, as intense. Let me just keep on looking here. Like this plywood's not bad either. Uh, I like that one, the wood planks jerk. Cause I, I just want like a like a general uh, general like old wood uh, thing. We can actually I think we can look for wood and that's gonna filter out. There we go, all the wood materials. So fine grain wood, we got this plywood and we got this wood planks dirty. I think we're gonna use this one, the wood planks dirty. So I am gonna download this guys at 4K and the reason why I want to download them at 4K is, uh, what are we getting here? Let's check this out. Okay, so we have the diffuse, the displacement, the normal and the roughness, that's fine. That's all we need. We actually don't need the, um, the displacement. We can work with all of this guys. So I'm just gonna control X to cut this guys go into my projects here and let's go to our next to live. Let's go assets. I'm going to create here on the, on the lighthouse element. Let's create a new one called tileable wood. Now, usually when you're downloading this sort of like uh, textures, they will tell you what the resolution is, like what's the area. And you can see here the scale is 1.5 by 1.5 meters. So that means that it covers a 1.5 by 1.5 area. Um, so I'm going to go into, into Maya now. And we're going to create a plane here and I'm going to change the measurements of the plane to 150 because that, that will be um, like the, the proper like resolution that those guys have. OK, so this is what we're going to do right now. And uh, let's isolate this guy right here. And I'm going to assign a new material and we're going to be doing the, the complete like build up of shaders and everything uh, once we're inside of uh, inside of Unreal. But for now, I'm just going to call this uh, tileable. Wood. 
there we go now on the color map we're going to be assigning of course the um, elements here so let's go to assets lighthouse and we're going to assign the not the roughness wait did we not copy everything now it seems like there was like a like an issue here let me reopen this guys oh rather uh, sensitive open archive it's being used huh that's very weird let me let me cancel this I'm not sure why that happened let's try it again ah oh, come on windows help me out here we have the diffuse we have the roughness where we, we're missing the other two and I mean this this was not supposed to be like a super complicated one so that's very weird uh, okay let's try it again let's go downloads no not that one uh, this one uh, 7-zip open archive nope okay I'm gonna pause this real quick guys let me sort, sort this out and I'll be just back this is gonna be just a quick jump okay so I just went back here to the side guys to polyhaven and I'm, I'm gonna change this from uh, blender whatever to just like the zip folder and as you can see I don't need the blender I don't need the GLTF um, yeah, this one's fine. The AMB Devolution Roughness Metallic Diffuse is fine. We don't need Displacement. Uh, normal, I'm doing both of them. Eventually, we're just going to be using uh, the DirectX. And Roughness, that's fine. And I'm just going to hit Download. Now, let's see if this one actually likes to work. So, let's show in folder. Let's 7 zip. There we go. So, I think maybe what got the issue in the first uh, place or the first time was the, the fact that I didn't extract like the whole thing. So, let me go back here real quick. There we go. And that's it. So I'm just going to drag and drop this. Perfect. So now it's working. So now we go back into Maya. And here on the channel, or this element, we are going to go to our assets, to the lighthouse, of course, tileable wood. And on the textures, we're going to select this diffuse. Because we only want the color. And as you can see, there we go. We have this very nice plank color. And here's where the trick is going to come into play. So as you can see, I'm actually going to go into the plane. And I'm going to reduce the amount of, of elements here to 1. So there's only going to be one division. And as you can see, we have some very nice lines where the wood is giving me the planks. So what I can do is I can actually model this, guys. So I'm going to control click there, 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 and there, like those elements right there. And then I'm going to select all of the edges. And I'm going to say uh, modeling mesh or edit mesh detach. There we go. So now each specific face is a separate plank, which is inheriting the same sort of like effect that we have here. Now I'm going to grab uh, all of them. And I'm going to say mesh separate. So they're all separate objects. I'm going to grab all of them. I'm going to give them a little bit of an extrusion. There we go. Now you can see that, yes, we are going to get a little bit of distortion here, but it shouldn't be that much of a deal. There we go. And then I'm going to delete the lower faces because we're never going to be seeing the lower faces. Those are going to be uh, hidden. So we're only going to have the upper face. I mean, you can keep them. Actually, I'm going to keep them because uh, the newer reels, they, they like when, when things are not like perfectly like this. And then I'm going to grab all of this and I'm just going to bevel them. And what bevel will do, as you can see, is it won't really distort the, the effect as much. Actually, um, I'm actually going to uh, combine them again. So let's delete history. And then I'm going to combine them again so that when we bevel, the bubble works uh, at the same like length and, and width with everything as you can see there and that's it like that that's all i'm gonna do and why am i doing this well because if we have our, our light you're gonna see that there is gonna be an actual shadow being casted on those specific areas now this is not just gonna be like a like a plane with just fake normal map information there's actually like legit <laughs> legit modeling here and these are super super low as you can see it's only it's only uh 308 um triangles so so we can definitely use this guys and, and just populate the whole thing now we could actually like just increase the resolution here a little bit and and I don't think we're gonna have that much of a deal however the scale of the objects might be affected a little bit however this is not the end of it like I'm gonna use this guys for like the border here and one of the cool things is eventually we might be able to just grab like a couple of this guys oh, okay yeah we have a problem here uh yeah okay L let me go back because yeah sometimes when we do the extrusion things let me check Say the mesh separate. Does it separate? Okay, it did separate. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete history for transformation. There we go, and uh, let's just combine them again. Sometimes when when you do that like sort of like weird bevel, uh, some things will will get like stuck together. There we go. 
So now each plank is a different plank. And what we're going to be able to do is we're going to push this guys here on the border, like let's say around there, and we can just grab like one of this, double click, go into vertex mode, and if we move this guys just a little bit out, we're going to create a more interesting silhouette, as you can see right there. It's going to give us a very, very nice effect. And the fact that this looks like the fiber of the wood, it, it's such a small detail that you won't really notice. Now, we could, of course, unfold and, and try to get, like, a better texture. But I think we're just going to be we're going to be just fine. Like, the most important thing is, is this guy's right here, right? Now, this is not all. This is not the, the end of the, the things. Um, as I mentioned, I, I want to create this sort of, like, like the whole thing. But I want to create it in such a way that it looks like the like the docs that we were... Uh, that we were referencing and as you can see docs can sometimes be built in this sort of like modular fashion and I think this is one that what's gonna help us uh, create this very nice effect for the whole floor uh, you can see it there it's a little bit difficult to tell but you can see some planks go one way and some planks go another way so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new cube I'm gonna uh, let, let's let me grab this guy and just bring it back to, to zero zero actually that's not gonna be <laughs> that's not what I'm going for let me just grab the cube that we created. I'm just gonna snap it there to the corner. There we go. So what I'm gonna do with this cube is I'm gonna use this to create sort of like the, the volume that's gonna be encompassing this uh, woods right here. So I'm gonna do something like this. And I think something like that's fine. And now let's, so it's, a, it's like four. So let's say four and four. There we go, I think, I think that's good. And now I'm just gonna position this right about there. I mean, if we want to be super, super precise, we can be. It's just a matter of like grabbing this point and then snapping it there and snapping it there. There we go. So now there's there's not going to be any any sort of like uh, um, weird elements here. I'm actually going to go five here on the scale. There we go, five and five. And now I'm going to grab this face right here and I'm going to extrude this out. And I'm going to snap it to this other side right here. There we go. So that's going to be my my main plank. And, and that's all I need. This is this is the plank that I need because what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna go UVs. I'm gonna do a planar mapping from the uh, Y axis in this case, apply. And now if I were to assign the same material to this guy, you can see that we're gonna have this thing right here, which is gonna look close to what I want. It's not it's not perfect there, or it's not perfect yet. I'm gonna show you one little trick here. So on this one. I'm actually going to be doing the uh, the unfold, so I'm going to say uh, File, uh, UV Editor, and we definitely need to do a couple of cuts here. So I'm going to go UV, 3D Cut and Show UV Tool. We're going to cut the lower side like this, and then we're going to cut the little corners here and here, here and here. There we go. Now this edge, actually, we don't need anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. That's also going to save us some geometry. I'm definitely going to give it a bevel. Probably like two segments in a small fraction. There we go. And now we're gonna go UVs, UV editor, grab the UVs and hit Control U to unfold. And I'm gonna say modify, and I'm gonna um, layout. So layout, which is gonna give me this. In this case, I, I want it to be the other way around. So I'm gonna go again, a modify layout, and I'm gonna change the options here to vertical. So that now the UVs are faced vertical, and as you can see, we're inheriting the same amount of detail here on the on the woods. Now, this one, I do want this to be a little bit denser than the than the rest of the elements, and here's where tileable textures come into place, because I can just grab this guys, make them wider, and by making them wider, I'm reusing the texture here on my element, and as you can see, this is gonna be, become uh, denser, which is exactly what I want. Now, I'm gonna grab this guy, I'm gonna position at the pivot point, or actually, I, I think that's a good position. I'm gonna go into rotation, this create rotate, we're gonna duplicate this guy, rotate this in 90 degrees, and this one is of course gonna be snapped to this other side. And then I'm gonna control D, move this one over here, rotate 90 degrees, snap it there, duplicate this guy, do this, and snap it here. And as you can see, we have successfully completed a very nice plank or like square of, uh, of elements, of textures, that we're gonna be able to reutilize as many times as we want. So I'm gonna combine all of this, combine it into a single object, and now it's just a matter of populating my little um, element right here. So I'm gonna make this go in a little bit, and here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna move the pivot point, oh, move the pivot point to the border. Let me isolate this so we can find the outermost edge, there we go. 
And now I'm just going to duplicate and snap it to the next border. Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. You can see that here, of course, we're not getting the exact uh, size. Don't worry, we're going to fix that later on. One very quick way in which we can fix this, and that's why we separated all of this, just delete them. Just delete this guy, this guy. We snap it to like around there. And even if we need to scale that specific one a little bit more, that's fine. Not gonna, it's not gonna affect us. Um, this one, so we can just like crunch them here. Yes, the texture is gonna be a little bit denser on this side, but again, it's it's such a small detail, and we're sort of like keep bashing this whole thing that it shouldn't really be a problem. So no player is gonna notice like, hey, the resolution, the vertical resolution of this uh, log right here is ten times bigger than uh, whatever we had everywhere else. No, like people don't notice that sort of thing. Then I'm gonna grab this guys, like all of these guys. And we're gonna just uh, duplicate and just position them right here. There we go. Now we could leave like a plane, just like a brown plane down here in case we see a little bit of the of the effect there. Or we can just be very, very precise. We can snap everything as well. But I think, I think I'm gonna be able to match it there. Uh, Maybe not. So I'm just gonna isolate everything, snap to point, and then snap to point there. There we go. So now I'm perfectly sure that this is gonna work. And now since we have two two of these guys, it's just a matter of grabbing every everything again. Like I'm not gonna grab the small ones, right? Because the small ones are a different size. So I'm just gonna get this, move this guys over here. Same deal. And then there's just Shift D, Shift D. As you can see, we pretty much get all the way to the back. Now, if we take a look at this, as you can see, this looks completely horrible. And the reason it looks horrible is because we're seeing the same planks going in the same direction all over the place. But here's where the where the where the cool part comes into place. We can randomly select, not randomly, like we can definitely select the ones that we want. We're gonna center the pivot point, we're gonna turn on the screen rotate, and we're gonna rotate them 45 degree angles, like this in a random fashion or semi-random fashion. Like you can select whichever ones you want. Just again, center the pivot point so that it's right on the center of the of the objects. And then, well, sorry, uh, center the pivot point and then just rotate them with this grid rotate turn on. And then here's another cool thing. Remember we didn't erase the, the woods on the back. Like they're all the same uh, texture. You can flip them. Again, center the pivot point, make sure all of them are centered and then flip them, and that's pretty much gonna give you a completely different texture. So as you can see, we're gonna have that sort of like uh, effect going around. And now, if you're a player and you're right here, you're not gonna notice that the same like pattern is repeating everywhere. And if you see a little bit of a pattern here, for instance, like here, I can see that red plank over there, uh, we can just move it around. And now take a look at this. Pretty difficult to tell where the, where the actual element is, right? And again, one of the cool things about this is that this is real geometry. So there's a little bit of a shadow here that's actually like pushing the details. So so that's the kind of thing that's really gonna push it uh, to the next level. Now, is this high poly? Yes, it is a little bit high poly. The easiest way to do this would be to bake everything into a single plane and just uh, create the texture. But as you can see, this is gonna give us a very, very nice result without much of a problem. So I'm gonna select uh, some of these guys right here. And let's populate the rest of the elements. So I'm gonna do Control D. Just move this to the side like this. And you can see we're gonna have to do the a very similar trick over there for this. <coughs> oh god, with this border. Or at this point, this is this is where um, as, as like game designers or something's gonna be like. I mean, should we just like leave it like that? I mean, we're just going over the edge a little bit. Maybe we just push everything else uh, a couple of centimeters across, and, and and we should be fine, right? And the answer is yes. Most of the time, like if you if you need to modify things for the sake of simplicity. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly valid. So, for instance, here we, we're probably gonna need this guy's right here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this guy. Let's uh, rotate this like this. Snap it to to the woods right there. There we go. And then just move this over here. Right. We can even like have it not match perfectly. That's fine. And then just Control D. And then just shift the several times until we cover the whole platform. And then same deal, like this guys, it's it's very obvious that everything is repeating. So I'm just gonna grab everything here. 
we're gonna go to the um, we're gonna center pivot point here and we're gonna rotate them 90 degrees and maybe let's like flip them uh, like flip them 180 degrees again so that the that the pattern that we're seeing is not exactly the same let's center the pivot point and again just flip them this ones are gonna be a little bit more difficult because we, we're not gonna have as much uh, variation uh, but another thing that happens in games very often is that there's going to be so many objects like barrels, ropes, papers, like the nets. There, there's going to be so much information that you're not going to notice that the things are, are tiling. So again, just take a look at this thing and say, hey, you know what, like maybe these guys right here are, are tiling a, a little bit too much. Just rotating them around. And then maybe this one we, we flip it around as well so that the, like the bars or whatever are, are facing in a different direction and that's going to give you a... A, lot, uh, a completely different look and as you can see this is starting to look very nice let's turn on uh, the light and yeah like that's 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 pretty much what we're gonna have now we need to think about what to do with this guys and uh, I think we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow when we do uh, the locks because we're gonna be following a very very similar approach like all of the wooden beams that I see here not not all of them but most of the wooden beams like a lot of the supports here the house Definitely all of these beams right here, I'm gonna be using this technique. For other beams, like for instance, like this walkways over here, those I am gonna be teaching you another method that we can use to, to create a very nice a variation on the on the models uh, while still keeping the performance on a, on a good level. But finally, I just think we need to do this little guy right there. So I'm just gonna grab like nine of these guys. Let's bring this thing down. And again, like just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna keep it this size. I mean, in this case, I could just like delete those. And since the size here is not that like that much of a difference, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm gonna combine these guys. And that particular one is gonna be stretched just a little bit more than than everything else. So that those are gonna be like slightly, slightly bigger planks, but shouldn't be that much of a deal. Now this guys, I am gonna add them into a layer and just hide them for now. So that we, we can see the whole like construction so far. And yes, we need the supports. But as you can see, we have the floor. The whole floor is ready for us. Now, we definitely need to organize this. So let me let me grab all of the cubes here, which I believe are all of these guys. And I'm going to control G. And I'm going to call, call this uh, floor boards. Now, let's take a look at the poly count. It's 36,000. No, 46,000 triangles. It's fine. This is perfectly fine because there's a lot of, again, a lot of different tricks that you can do uh, for uh, for optimization in, in Unreal. And uh, this is this is not bad. Like, you can have, like, in Unreal Engine 4, you could have, like, 10 million polygons on the scene at a single time. Not an object made out of 10 million polygons, but you could have, like, a lot of objects in, in total or totaling to 10 million polygons. Uh, Unreal Engine 5, there's no limit. With Nanite, like we just make this thing Nanite and we're good to go. And again, one of the great things and probably the, the best lesson that I want to teach you with this, guys, is remember, we're only using one 4K texture. It's one 4K texture and look at how much real estate we're getting here. Now, uh, let's 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 take it to the next level before we finish this. We can actually add the normal map and, and get even more detail here. It's going to be tangent space normal map and we're going to be adding... Uh, the normal map that we downloaded, which again, no need to know uh, substance, no need to know um, texturing, no need to create our own like elements in in, um, in ZBrush. Like it's just a good old fashioned texturing work. Remember, we changed this to raw, very important. And there we go. So now you can see that the that the lines and the and the intensity of the normal map is even is even better. So, yeah. This is looking very, very nice. Uh, oh, actually, we, we do need uh, we need we do need the floor over here. So let me let me turn off on, on my my thing here, and I'm just gonna grab again just the actually let's grab like the second row, and we're probably gonna need like a third row. So let's grab like a third row right here, duplicate this, and this is gonna be this area right here see how nicely it matches like very very close again no need to to worry here let me just fill in the gap there quick as a way to select those is just create a selection box here and deselect anything that I know it's not gonna be selected like that and there you go so that's probably like the fastest way to do this there we go I'm gonna control uh, group it and just scale it up a little bit, just a little bit. No one's gonna notice this slight scale. And we're gonna have a very nice 
wood floor for all of our of our areas. So look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Like we, we took it what 20 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, maybe 20 minutes if we if we take away the, the time it took me to, to fix this kind of thing and, and we got everything ready to go. Now here, um, again, like just for simplicity's sake, I'll just push this guys forward. Like eventually like this phase right here would be like about there. And, and that's just gonna make my life so much easier. If you have to, for some reason or another, like make sure it's perfectly fine, then yeah, you're probably gonna have to scale a couple of things here and there. Uh, but believe me, like I've, I've worked with several uh, studios, several clients, and most of the times when this kind of thing arises, it's like, hey, what should we do here? Like I have all of these tiles, uh, do we add one extra tile? Do we remove this? Do we want me to cut this one? They're like, nah, just leave it like that. Just push it a little bit more and that's it. And, and again, you're, you're gonna be completely, completely fine. Always, always check with your client and with your uh, with your studio. Of course, don't do don't go doing things that are you're not uh, that, that have not been approved. Uh, but yeah, this is this is usually the way to go. And uh, that's it, guys. Uh, this is part of five of our uh, of our tutorial. It's gonna take a long time. Well, not a long time, but it's gonna take a, a while, guys. So hopefully you guys are patient. Please keep supporting us. Watch the videos. Let us know in the comments what you think. Give us a like, share. You know, this is pretty much a master level class. It's, it's, it's very close to what we would be doing on a, on a premium course. So uh, we, we really appreciate the support and, and we hope you guys are enjoying it as well. And uh, yeah, this is it for me, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.